everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to Tattoo Talk Tuesday. I am in this corner of my room and in like true YouTuber form, I have a candle lit. But today's video topic, despite the candle lit and the fashion shot of my closet, today's video topic is something that is pretty serious and pretty dear to me and something that I have been dying to talk about but I just didn't know if it would go over well, if it was something that was worth talking about. But after the overwhelming response on my temporary tattoo video, which was, you know, a little controversial because it's something that you can have an opinion of, I thought that I would have a new video that could be opinionated and could go left or right because I want this channel to be interactive and I want it to be discussion and I don't want it to be like, well, I got a tattoo the other day and the lady on the train yelled at me and now I feel bad. Like, obviously there's room for that on my channel, but today this is something I really want to talk about and it is something I have opened up to discussion for you guys. And that is copyright infringement on tattoos. Now, the first time I had any thought about this was when there was a lot of drama, you may remember, with Tuesday Basin and other enamel pin artists after the company Zara had used a lot of their images exclusively, ripping them off, stealing them, and then reselling them on their clothing. Obviously, this is a huge copyright infringement issue, however, a lot of the issue, a lot of the problems that they had fighting Zara were that they were just small online exclusive artists and Zara actually made a statement and was like, you're nobody, we're somebody, so that's your answer. So obviously a lot of us on the internet as people who enjoy art, patronize art, live artistically, or are artists, I think a lot of people came together and tried to show where what they believed in and buy these pins and show their support for their favorite artists. It's something that I preach to you guys, show your support for your favorite artists. But in all of this, I had a little bit of an unpopular opinion. And I almost felt guilty having it. I have not talked about it on any other platform. And that is, what about the artists who are making these pins of things that are clearly also copyright inf copyrighted? And I mean, I think I see a lot of stuff with The Simpsons and a lot of stuff with like Garfield, things like that. Obviously things we know and understand, there's a lot of Spongebob stuff out there. And there are things where they are recreated things and then things that are just definitely just Bart Simpson. So I've been seeing a lot of shops, like Etsy shops, get shut down for using keywords like Simpsons and Bart and stuff, and people are finding clever ways of getting around this. I saw a Spongebob thing that was just like Tiki Head when it was really Squidward's house. And you're like, okay, I am a person who recognizes Squidward's house, so obviously when it says Tiki Head, it's not something you really think about, but it's actually like a clever way to avoid getting your shop shut down by Etsy or wherever you sell your pins on. And I think it's complicated because what can you do? These are supposed to be huge media giants and oh, the Simpsons have been around for a million years. I think I can make a buck or two off of a Bart Simpson pin. But that was my unpopular opinion. I didn't want to share it with anybody because I was like, ugh. So, you know, I don't mean any hate by it. I am a, a big, huge pin collector. You've seen my stuff out there. But this led me to think, what about tattoo artists who specialize in these similar things. I think there are tattoo artists out there who do flash sheets and big days of cartoons and copyrighted things. Is, and tattoo artists, you know, they're making money off of these things. I think with the big, huge reboot of Pokemon, you're seeing a lot more Pokemon tattoos. And is there 
a royalty to pay to Nintendo? Or not, because we love Pokemon, we love The Simpsons, we love all of these things, and we deserve to be able to encapsulate them and put them on our body because they represent something different. However, is there a difference between buying a licensed Hello Kitty item or having that same Hello Kitty tattooed on you forever? In the first situation, the license goes to Sanrio, who is the creator and the owner of the Hello Kitty copyright. The second situation, the money only goes to the tattoo artist. They may have recreated or created a new concept for this Hello Kitty tattoo, but the original idea and the original source is Hello Kitty, is Sanrio. So I got to thinking about this a lot. And obviously, you cannot police tattoos, and there would be no possible way on earth for Sanrio to come out here and say, hey, you have to pay a royalty fee for the Hello Kitty that you got tattooed on you. Because that's impossible, it's impossible to police, and it would create an entirely new system of laws. It would be an entirely new thing for tattooing. Obviously, it would disrupt the industry immensely. But it's something to think about. Because if you made an unlicensed Hello Kitty shirt and tried to sell it, your shop will get shut down. But if you are a tattoo artist who specializes in Hello Kitty tattoos, and that's how you make your entire income, no law that would protect Sanrio in that case but it's almost similar because instead of making a t-shirt a tangible thing, you're making a tattoo which goes on your body forever. However, I don't think that a big company would be allowed to tell you that you couldn't get a tattoo of that. Obviously they can't. They also can't, honestly, they can't really stop counterfeit production of their products. I've seen so many fake Hello Kitty stuff, so much fake Hello Kitty stuff out there. We all have. We've all bought it. I think we're all pretty familiar with the case where Taylor Swift was coming on Etsy and shutting down shops for selling $13 mugs with her, her lyrics on them. But if I went to a tattoo shop and got Taylor Swift lyrics tattooed on me, it would cost a lot more than $13. I owe Joanna Newsom a ton of money on her images if this ever becomes a thing. Sorry, mom. So with that, I went to the internet and I asked a couple of my favorite artists and I asked you guys what you thought about it. And I thought that the poll that I put on Twitter was pretty interesting. I went to Twitter and I said, can, subject, can tattoos be subject to copyright infringement? Not just tattoos of cartoons, but stolen artworks as well. 76% percent of people said yes the artist has the right and 24 percent of people said that no art is fair use so with that i asked the oppositional question and i said does the same go for larger companies should we pay royalties to nintendo for getting pokemon tattoos 16 percent of people said that it was the same thing that it was copyright infringement and 84 percent of people said no that it's different so I went to Twitter and I asked Aurora, you know Aurora, she made the quick and flashy last year. When I asked Aurora, how would you feel if someone got a tattoo from your artwork? Is there a way that you would prefer to be approached? Would you want to be paid? And how would you feel about someone, how, how would you feel if someone stole it without asking? If someone wanted a tattoo from my artwork, it would be better if they asked about it beforehand and I'd be happy to discuss it with them. Social media is a great place for that. If they are just taking inspiration and letting the artist alter the piece, I don't necessarily need to get paid, I just want to know about it. If, in the other hand, they want exactly what I've created, I'd want to receive money for it. I would be pretty hurt if someone stole something I've created. The tattoo artist would have gotten money for the piece that I, the original artist, and, and I, the original artist, would have got nothing. I feel like it's important to contact the original author if you see a cute drawing online and want to get it tattooed. 
It's a nice gesture even if the artist says no, but if you really like their style, maybe you could commission something for you. It's amazing to see your art on someone else's body when, they've, when you've given consent and received something for it yourself. So what do you think about that? If you are an artist and you create something and someone takes it for their own tattoo, not only do you lose getting paid, but the tattoo artist gets paid for recreating the art. Obviously the tattoo artist deserves to get paid because they went through the training and everything for being able to tattoo. So who ends up losing out in this situation? It sounds like the artist. Aurora brings up a really good point that if you commission someone to create a tattoo for you, then you pay them and the original artist receives the benefit of that. It also gives their art worth and their time worth. But if you are someone who sneaks onto their Instagram, finds a picture that you like and just takes it to the tattoo shop, it's kind of like all the work of the original artist was just skipped over. Obviously, there is no legality around this. I see this all the time where someone creates a piece of art and then another person gets tattooed by it, gets the tattoo, and honestly, if they are a huge artist on Instagram, right away people are going to believe that it was their original art and they're going to receive publicity and potential new clients, new followers, tons of likes, and obviously cash. So who knows, it's super touchy. Oh, I asked the same question to my great friend Ava. You may remember her, she did all the art for my Stranger Things lookbook. I asked her the same question. And she said, funny, I just got asked to do a tattoo design. It would definitely feel pretty shitty if someone took one of my illustrations without letting me know. If you like my work enough for it to be tattooed on you, you would think you would want to tell me. Like, hey, I like this so much, I'm getting it. I would not have a problem with someone getting something, telling me, and not paying for an image that I already put on the internet, I think. I would be annoyed if someone specifically asked me to draw something for them and then got it without paying for it but I guess you can avoid all that by sending a, by not sending a high res image until you've been paid. So I think that she brings up a really great point too. Obviously, if someone commissions something for you and skips out on paying for it, that's totally fucked up. But what do you do if your image is already on the internet? You can't stop anybody from getting it. And once it's out there, it reaches so many people that somebody may create new art influenced by it and then that new art might be tattooed. So it's so far gone at that point that you might e even enjoy an image that was so influenced by something so far back that you don't know that you're getting a copy. So it's really touchy and it's something that just absolutely cannot be policed and cannot change. Last year, I put out a video all about tattoo theft and how I put one of my tattoos on the internet, another girl got it, and messaged me and was like, tattoo inspo, and I responded back to her negatively, critiquing her tattoo artist for blatantly copying off of me. I got a lot of negative feedback. I think notoriously, this is something that is split 50-50. People either feel one way about it or the other. And the most common negative response I got was if you put it on the internet, if you are someone who exists in a social platform and you put your tattoo on the internet, you deserve to get it stolen and you have it coming to you. So when I put this out on Instagram for you guys to comment on and think about, I got a comment from the artist Jessie on Instagram and she said, thank you for discussing this topic. I get asked by a lot of people if they can use my artwork as tattoo designs and I always ask them to purchase the piece for me first. That way they are supporting the original artist and they have an actual reference for their tattoo artist instead of just stealing a photo from my Instagram or Etsy. I think that this is a great thing. I mean, obviously this would have to it would take a perfect world and a perfect person and a perfect patron of your art in order to do that and support you. I think it only takes a click of a button to screen cap something and bring it to a tattoo shop. So I think that 
it sounds like a great thing and it sounds like a great theory and I hope that's what always happens for everybody. But I also think it takes a great tattoo artist to decide when you show them that image if they're going to copy it line for line, if they're going to ask you some information about it, if they're going to ask you if you got permission from the artists. But honestly, I don't know how frequently that happens or how much it happens. So if you've been tattooed with original art, please leave that comment down below and tell me if your tattoo artist asked you specifically if you had permission by the original artist or who they just drew it up right away or offered to put a little bit of a frill on it. So my king added to the discussion, you know my king, and he said, legally anything can be tattooed, but tattoo designs can't be stolen from for other mediums. More specifically, there is a legal precedence for tattooers to copy trademark and copywritten images and legal precedence for tattooers holding copyright on designs. So you can legally get Mike Tyson's, ta Mike Tyson's face tattoo, but you can't legally put it on a shirt, if that makes sense. And I think that is a brilliant point. I think you guys remember that from a couple years ago when Mike Tyson got the tattoo on his face and people obviously wanted to create merchandise around this and that was a no-go. But again, there is no legality around someone receiving the tattoo of the thing because you cannot copyright it on the body. So one of my friends from my old job commented and she said, I worked on a movie where one of the actors was heavily tattooed. He used the same tattoo artist luckily, and we had to get the written permission of the tattoo artist in order for the actor to be shown in the movie, because the movie would make money and be publicly shown, etc, etc. I think that this is something that is really important to consider, because this also falls under the umbrella of copyright, and that is showing your body with your images on it. I mean, obviously, if I wanted to be in a movie or be on TV and there was something like that holding me back and I had to get permission from Mark Cross to show my arm, if Mark Cross said no and I couldn't be in the movie, I would be devastated because it's my body and it's my arm and potentially my career. However, I also do respect that it's Mark's work. So it is incredibly complicated because if I wanted to be in a magazine, most of my tattoos are done by Mark. So if I wanted to show my back, obviously permission should be given to Mark, but does it take away from the photo of me if it says tattoo by Mark Cross? Or is it just like when you wear a designer in a magazine? that would all be listed in the magazine. So yes, the model is there, but the makeup artist should be credited and the designer should be credited and the hairstylist should be credited and the photographer should be credited. So this opens up a whole new thing of the tattoo artist should be credited. Should they? Do you believe that they should? Or do you believe that it's your body and it's your images and it's the art you paid for? How do you feel? It's so beyond complicated if tattoos fall under copyright law because there is so much gray and there's so much interpretation. There is no bounds. And unfortunately, that can hurt somebody a lot. It can devastate someone's career or they can create an entire career surrounding it. I think all of us have seen our favorite tattoo artists completely ripped off and I think the only thing we can do is call them out. Call out the people who steal your tattoos. And I received a lot of flack about calling out the girl who took my tattoo and you know, I tried to censor her name and I do feel bad sometimes. But at the same time, I paid for that tattoo and she just went to some corner shop and got it done half the price, half of the thought. It's fucked up. But I don't think she should be arrested. I don't think I'm gonna see her in court. Me and Mike Ski dressed up real nice like that's her. So it's really difficult and it's really gray. I encourage all of you to keep the discussion going in the comments. If you make a response video to this, please tag me. Where do tattoos fall under in copyright law? 
are they subject to it? I have no answers for you. I don't even know how I feel. I have wanted a Sonic the Hedgehog tattoo my entire life, and I don't think I'm gonna get on the phone with Sega anytime soon and ask if that's cool, because no one can take away how I feel about Sonic, so I don't think I have to pay any royalties to it. But then again, are we, what if it changed? Like, are we all gonna cough up a couple bucks to the Harry Potter franchise? Or are we gonna <laughs> draw the blinds and hope no one finds out? Who knows? Who knows? Do we own the images once they are on our body? Or do we have no control of them? Think about it. Let me know. The Twitter poll is still live. Let me know how you feel. Vote on that. My Twitter is at QuietCoolKids. Same with my Instagram. Thank you for everybody who replied and who was a part of this and who is still replying. I love you guys so much. Share your stories down below. This is Tattoo Talk Tuesday. Give this video a thumbs up if you have any feelings about the situation. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. I make videos like this every Tuesday. I love you guys so much. And until next time, bye. Hey everybody, it is Quicken. And I know normally we do a tattoo talk video on Tuesdays, but today I'm going to talk about something that is a little more